All right, so we've had the uh, fixed epoxy on overnight. Uh, it's been about 24, 48 hours, and it's hardened up quite nicely. So now we've got to uh, fill any uh, gaps that we didn't get with the epoxy clay. You're going to have some areas that just aren't going to get covered, either because your tool has a gouge in it or some other reason. So we're going to fill that in using some wood filling product. Uh, here I've got uh, Carpenter's uh, wood filler from Elmer's and we're going to mix it up in a uh, cup to the consistency of about toothpaste. And I've already mixed up some, just a little bit of water and it, it's about the consistency of toothpaste. It makes it easy to dab into place. We're going to take and uh, just take a paintbrush and we're going to get some on there. And I'm going to do the fins first. And just go ahead and put it on there. You're going to be sanding off most of it. Uh, so you can kind of put it on heavy. It's not really going to make that big of a difference if you put on just a little bit and have to do it two or three times or one big coat and be done with it. Kind of a personal preference. Do you want to do a bunch of sanding, stop sanding, stop sanding, you know, put it on, stop to sand after it dries. I just like to go ahead and get it coated on, let it dry a day or two, and then sand it off and I'm done instead of doing it, after applying it two or three times. And I'm going past where my uh, epoxy fillet clay is at, and that's so that it uh, covers any area that I may have missed. And there might be a slight gap right there at the seam where the, the epoxy fix it clay and the uh, body tuber fin are. And this way I'm making sure that I cover that area because I'm going to sand it right back off and there's not going to be anything left as a high mark. And that's why we're doing this. So this is going to fill in our low marks and we're not going to have low high problems. So we're going to finish doing this, uh, same thing on the launch lug, we're going to fill it with the same thing. Um, right here in the center section, what I've done is I've felt it, and it's fairly close together, you can almost not even see it. I'm taking some 220, you can take 320 paper, 220 paper, and we're going to sand that back and forth, and we're going to smooth that out the best we can. The idea is to knock off any high ridges that might be burrs on the tube or not. And if, if it's bad enough, if there's gaps or something, you can use the same epoxy, uh, the Elmer's wood filler to fill that in. If you have gaps in your spirals, you can fill those in. Uh, this white tube is wound pretty well, so I really don't need to do the uh, spirals with the epoxy, uh, with the uh, Elmer's. But we're going to sand the, the tube just to make sure that the tube is nice and straight and that the, the lip is gone where the two join together. And then when we go to paint it and sand our primer paint, we're going to be doing probably two or three coats of primer. Uh, that's going to level out any discrepancies there. So we're going to finish putting on our uh, um, Elmer's putty, Elmer wood filler uh, here on the fins, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, let it dry, and then we'll sand that off and uh, get it set for priming. Uh, so this is just another step closer to the primer. Basically, once this is done and we're done with our sanding and any additional touch-ups we need to do, we'll be ready for primer. All right, so this has had a chance to dry now, uh, basically 24, 48 hours. Again, we've let this uh, wood filler dry, and it's time to sand it off. We're going to start off with a 220 grain, and then we'll move up to like a, a 320 uh, or finer. And again, this is just going to take out any imperfections that we may happen to have here. If you have some overstray on the tube, just sand that off first. And then work into your, your slot. Now, you can uh, use various tools to make your paper, sandpaper round and work it into the cracks and crevices and sand. And again, remember, you still have one more coat going over this, and that's going to be your primer coat. So if you get little fuzzy imperfections, don't worry, those will disappear when you do your primer coat. And i got a little bit here that I want to sand off. 
uh, if you have you little round wooden dowels are great for this. You can attach your sandpaper to the wooden dowels, and it makes great for uh, sanding this stuff off. And we're looking for anywhere where we have spray, stray material that we want to get off. And we're sanding down the uh, fixed epoxy till it's smooth. Got some uh, excess material on top of the lawn folks, so we're going to sand that off. And just keep going until you get pretty close to what you want. Then you're going to switch up to your, your finer grit sandpaper. Now on the fins, you want to be careful not to sand too much on the fins themselves. So we're going to try and take off this excess uh, material on the edge of the fin here without sanding too much on the paper itself. We don't want to uh, sand the paper down to where there's wood exposed because that's going to destroy the effect that we tried to get there with the air foiling and making everything look nice and pretty. So just sand until you got it relatively smooth and come in with your final sanding or your finer grit sandpaper. And then we're going to sand it to here. So I'm going to go ahead and sit here and get all this sanded up and then we'll show you how well we finish it off and we'll get ready for primer. All right, you can see we've finished sanding and uh, we took off most of, in a lot of places, the... Uh, filler that we threw in there uh, and that's going to give us a lot better of a, an edge and uh, fill in those gaps and other spots that uh, we weren't too happy with. I'm going to go over this one more time really carefully and make sure I've got everything the way I like it. And then we're going to go ahead and get some primer on it but just to uh, give you a view of what it looks like once you sand most of the uh, wood filler off of it. So we're going to get her set up for primer now and then we'll get her painted. All right here you can see we're ready for uh, primer. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we dust off our rocket completely. Uh, that way there's nothing to uh, prevent good adhesion of our primer paint. Then after we're done dusting our rocket off, we're going to go ahead and uh, make something to hold it for. Now I just take the uh, 24 uh, millimeter motor adapter that uh, I made for this rocket and I put it uh, E engine or a D engine, just take and shove a stick up inside of it, uh, tape it in place, and now I can slide it all the way up inside, and that acts as my stick to hold while I'm painting the rocket. So uh, I still wear a glove on the one hand, but it's a lot easier to hold the rocket, and then I can just anchor it somewhere or set it straight up in a, some sort of bucket or something to keep it from sliding around, and that'll help. Uh, uh, keep our rocket uh, up and off of everything while it's drying. So we're going to go ahead and get our first coat of primer on here and then uh, we're going to let that dry for uh, oh, 10 15 minutes and then we'll get our next set of coat, uh, primer on it. Uh, I'm using a Rust Oleum filler primer. This actually builds up better than a lot of the other primers do. It uh, builds a little bit of a body into the uh, primer coat so that uh, it sticks and uh, hides a little bit of the uh, defects that are potentially in the uh, paper and the uh, balsa wood in our finishing. So a couple coats of that and then I can switch up to a uh, regular primer if I wanted to. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, drill in optional holes if you're using an altimeter. I have a Jolly Logic 2 altimeter that I stuff inside these to, uh, some of these rockets to see how high they go. They need access to the outside air to get an accurate pressure reading uh, so they can tell you the altitude that they flew to. So what I've done is I've taken the fin marking guide and I've divided three equal points to mark. Uh, we're going to take it, we're going to wrap it around the body tube. And then we're going to mark those points on the tube. Now after I've marked the points, I'm going to take my Dremel or other high-speed drill and we're going to drill three holes into the body tube. Uh, gentle even pressure. You can see I've already drilled my holes here. And we're going to do gentle even pressure and we're going to pierce through. Now after we're through, we're going to take our uh, 320 sandpaper or uh, even better if you want and we're going to lightly sand those holes because we've made a, a raised area. So we sand it until it feels pretty smooth. We're going to sand the other one. And again, uh, three holes, uh, whatever is recommended for your al altimeter or larger if you'd like. Uh, don't need to go too crazy with the size of the holes, just big enough to do the job. 
uh, recommendations of your altimeter. Now we need to stiffen these holes up a little bit. I'm going to make sure that they're nice and rounded out and smooth. And a little bit more sanding on that one. That's good. Okay, so now we need to stiffen them just like we have everything else. So we're going to take our uh, thin CA glue. We're going to dab it a little bit around the hole. We're going to let it soak in a little bit. Blow in the hole to make sure there's none in the hole itself. And then wipe off the excess. I'm going to add a little bit more. And be sure you wipe off any excess that goes anywhere. You don't want that up there. Then we're going to go to our next one. And again, this is just to stiffen the hole up. Since we put a hole in it, we need to uh, reinforce it a little bit so it doesn't uh, start fraying up and uh, deteriorating. And last time. All right, now we just set this off to the side to uh, finish drying. And then we'll get ready to do some uh, more sanding and uh, check these holes up again after they dry. We can sand them a little bit more, take off the roughness, and we're good to go. Big thing to remember is remove your shock cord and parachute if you have inserted them and drill well below your shock cord mount. You don't want to drill through your shock cord mount. Remove anything that's inside to drill your holes. Drill below your shock cord mount, three equal holes. Uh, in this case, I did a uh, one-eighth hole. All right, so uh, we're pretty much at the completion of the build for this time of the year. It's a little bit too uh, damp and cold to be painting. Uh, I could make an easy bake oven, rocket oven, uh, using a, like a wardrobe box and uh, some hooks and a couple of 75-watt 75 75 watt light bulbs, but I'm not going to do that at this time. Uh, we do have a little bit more sanding to do on the uh, rocket, but you can see we've got some really nice fillets done here. Uh, they look really, really good. Uh, just some defects here and there uh, that I do want to sand and smooth out a little bit better and get a few more coats of primer on. Then we'll get color on there. We've got the rocket mount uh, for the 24 millimeter motor. Uh, you see where I put the tape around. That tape actually matches the same size as the body tube so it's very flush and smooth here. Uh, I do that so that when I go to tape the motor on it's a very very smooth fit with uh, white masking tape between here and the motor. Uh, I do the same thing when I put in a uh, motor and I'll take and I'll wrap tape around it until it's flush here and then I can tape the motor in place. Again I use tape retention for the motors and believe it or not it works quite well for keeping the motor from uh, coming out. So the reason for doing the ring here it keeps the motor from going any further in uh, just a few loops of tape bring it flush with the uh, tube here and that'll keep, that acts as a thrust ring and it keeps the motor from flying in. The reason for the tape on the outside will keep the motor from popping out. If you want you can put a little piece of tape on the outside of the motor to help stick it in there. You can do the same thing here and here on the motor uh, 24 millimeter motor mount adapter. Uh, that's what the purpose of this here is. It acts as a thr thrust ring to keep it from moving any far farther forward in the tube. Uh, we made our little uh, rocket stand. I make the stands generally about the time I get ready to start priming the uh, rocket. And it's designed to, to hold the rocket upright. Again, the idea is that you don't want to lay your rocket tube uh, horizontal with the fins supporting it up in the air because you're going to end up with a bow in the rocket right around here. Just naturally it's going to bow. Uh, it's something I do every now and then is I take a rocket and I'll hold it up and I'll turn it while sighting down the tube. And I'm looking for bows in the tube uh, that I can uh, correct by balancing it out on a flat surface or something like that. So we've got everything set. Uh, a few more uh, coats of primer and some more sanding to get rid of a few defects I've seen in the uh, primer paint here. And uh, you can see where we did the... Uh, the coupler right here, we've completely made that joint disappear. Uh, here again, we have the, the other one where we sanded it first, then we put the uh, wood filler around it, and then we sanded it again. And as we add uh, primer, it will disappear to where you can't tell that there was ever a coupler there. So uh, some color coat, and we will be ready to uh, seal it after that. So after we do our last coat of primer, 24 hours minimum, 
at uh, about uh, 70 degrees before you want to put paint. That allows the primer to off-gas completely the uh, solvents that are in the, the paint. And then after you color coat, your final color coat, again, let it go two or three days, 48 to 72 hours, at about 70 degrees to off-gas all the volatile solvents used in uh, that paint. And then finally, your decals or stickers or whatever you're using, if you use water decals, let it sit 48 hours more so that all the water can evaporate out of the decal and then apply your uh, final clear coat. Uh, and again, you need to let that sit for those times because there I've gone through, I'm going to show you one right now, where I didn't wait the full 24 hours and I applied the paint and then within a day, I applied the clear coat and it wrinkled the paint because the paint still had VOCs. I've had the same thing happen with decals where I didn't let the decals sit long enough uh, before putting on the clear coat and the water is still in there and it causes problems with the final uh, look and appearance of the rocket. So after primer, 24 hours minimum, it's about 70 degrees. After paint, about 48 hours minimum before decals. After decals, water slide decals 48 hours before clear coat and if you uh, just go from paint clear uh, from color coat to uh, paint uh, clear coat so going paint to clear coat you want to give it that 48 hours to off gas again anyways so uh, we'll get some pictures of this uh, add it to the tail end of the video here uh, when we finally finish the color coat and then uh, some launches hopefully we'll be doing in uh, at the latest April so uh, keep them flying straight and remember pointy end up